BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. We are living in a time like no other in history. But fortunately for us, God wrote it down all in His prophecies what would happen next. Find out what prophecies came true this week, ripped straight from the headlines. Verily I say unto you, the only way to rightly understand prophecy is from a messianic Hebrew roots perspective, for without the roots the tree is dead. Stay tuned for the Prophecy News Headline Show, The Remnants Call. Welcome to The Remnants Call, the Sledgehammer Show. We're going to be talking about prophecy, politics, religion, straight truth, The Sledgehammer Show. I am your magnificent, crazy, fat host from Beth Goyne Messianic Congregation, the guy with the big old beer and the big old attitude, the one who will not yield on the word of God. I am Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goyne Messianic Congregation. I am joined on the line by Messianic Rabbi Eduardo, the fabuloso Carlos Santana Mangeris. And we're joined on the other line by our young Padawan, uh, the, the guy from the island of the Dominican Republic, man. Okay, Mr. Joshua, tall man Lara. We're going to be talking. What are we going to be talking about tonight? You know, the guys and gals and children of all ages. Well, we're going to be talking about the Sledgehammer Show number 186. Are we spiritually ready to go to war? Are we really spiritually ready? You know, we might be militarily ready, or we think we might be ready, but if, if God is not for us, then let's take a look at what's going on in the news. We're going to go through the scriptures to really talk about are we spiritually ready. There you see a picture of Dallas Mega Judge Pastor Robert Jeffers. Jeffers, okay? He said Trump, Trump's spiritual advisor says God supports conflict with North Korea. God supports conflict with North Korea. Whoa! Okay, um, it says here, President Donald Trump's spiritual advisor said, God's got the president's back. Should Trump decide to take out dictator Kim Jong-un? I don't know where we find that in scripture there, son. You know, that, you know, yeah, somebody's talking a big game, talking a big game, okay, um, that we could take him out. That, that would be murder, M-U-R-D-E-R, -E murder. Okay, this is coming from a guy that can't even get the Sabbath right, okay, or you know, the Holy Days right. Hey, um, you know, uh, Mr. Jeffers, Robert, give me a call. We'll teach you the Word of God. Maybe you can grow a beard, and, you know, since you can't even get that right either, you know, you're advising our president. Um, now, let's see what else we got going on here news-wise. Okay, this is, uh, this is the closest that the U.S. has been to nuclear war since the Cuban missile crisis since the cuban missile crisis uh it has been now confirmed by our president that north korea has successfully created miniature nuclear warheads now this is one of the things why we need a wall i mean the border of canada you got all those cockroaches up there but the key here is unless the lord guards the house of watchmen watch in vain okay um these new miniature nuclear warheads and these little suitcase nuclear bombs are already here on American soil. Okay, let's go on to the next uh, news story. Trump boasts U.S. nuclear arsenal stronger than ever. Donald Trump tweeted that his first order as president was to renovate and modernize the American nuclear arsenal, which is now stronger than ever before, adding that Washington will never allow any nation to surpass U.S. power. Well, I like that about the president, but are we spiritually ready to go to war? Last news story before I bring on my good pal, Mr. Rabbit, Eduardo Mangeros, the raving yep. rabbit. South Dakota airmen arrived ready to fight tonight from Guam. Okay, the two U.S. Air Force B-1 bombers under the command of the U.S. Pacific Air Force joined their counterparts from the Republic of Korea and Japan Air Forces in sequence bilateral missions August 7th. Okay, we got a lot of firepower over there, um, over in the uh, Far East. The question is, Rav Eduardo, the question is, my good friend, let me just move this microphone a little bit closer here. Let me ask you a question. 
because this is a topic for tonight's uh, Sledgehammer show. Do you think that we're ready, that we're spiritually ready to go to war? What do you think there, Rab Ed? Hello, everyone. I really think that the country is not, is not ready for, for this type of, of war, basically, because uh, once we can see from, I would say, before Mr. Trump's uh, become president, before that, I mean, the country was already falling apart. The country was already developed and get everything, like, I would say, free, free things. The, the population started to get everything like a puppet. The, the population started to a lot of welfare, a lot of, a lot of things from the government. They start to get everything from them, from the government. But right, and they don't know how to. They never prepare basically for what is coming. I think there is a a sign from God. What Yeshua says when when you when you hear wars and rumor of wars, run to the mountains. But as, as we can see, nobody knows that. Nobody can can see these signs. Nobody hear all that. And I really believe if this war starts, a lot of people is gonna be there, especially spiritually, because they don't know who who they counting with. They don't know who's gonna con um, who's who's gonna consult them because they don't know the comforter, they don't know the one who advises us, the, the one who, who says, here, when you see this, prepare yourself, because something is about to happen. Uh, basically, this country, they don't really know God. They pull God away from the society already. By doing that, they, this country is I mean, bottom line, it's not ready because there is no teachings outside, no morals. And I do believe that God is the one who's doing all this because we reject God. People reject God from from the schools, from from the public places. You know, they remove uh, scriptures and they just teaching what they want to hear, but they don't hear how to prepare the Lord and His Torah. He says, prepare yourself. Uh, how We have the example from Joseph. He started to to gather a lot of food for, for, for years for what is coming. But right now, this country is not doing that. And it's going to be a, a big catastrophe if all this is start. Well, I've been told we've been having some uh, little technical glitches, so we're going to take a quick commercial message. We're going to come back with talking about schools, preparing, but most of all, spiritually, are we ready for war? We'll be back right after this quick commercial message. This is the Shalom Ranger with WTRC Radio. We'll be right back after a short commercial break with more news, true news, that is really happening around the world. Remember, in everything you do, praise Adonai. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, Come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in scripture truly the way the truth and the life if you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai 
come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom. Welcome back to the Remnants Call, the Sledgehammer Show. We're talking about, are we spiritually ready for war? We had a bunch of uh, news stories about you know, Trump and Kim Jong-un, and we're, we're just getting ready for war. But militarily, do we have this power over Kim Jong-un? Yes. But the real big question, I'm going to bring on our young Padawan, Mr. Joshua Lara. Rabbit was talking about preparing and we've taken God out of the schools. Spiritually, Joshua, are we ready to go to war? I mean, we, we have a powerful military, but spiritually, you know, Israel was always a small nation, but she, she when she fought with God, she won. What do you think there, Joshua? Sure, everybody. Um, all right, we're not ready. We're not ready spiritually because it's the it's the it's the 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 form that we grow up. It's like this. This generation, even the past generation, um, nobody, nobody's ready. Everybody's focused on the flesh. Everybody thinking in their own things. Everybody is watching TV. Everybody is not if you're watching this live stream show, but if you're watching another thing that you're not supposed to watch, you're not ready. The the schools are not ready. Um, this nation, spiritually, if you see uh, the streets of New York, especially right now, there's a lot of homeless. Why? I know it's physically, but something's happening in the spirit. Something's happening in the church. Um, and, and the people that are supposed to be ready is um, ready for making more money. 
preaching about prosperity, preaching about um, having and having more of the flesh. Nothing spiritually, nobody thinking about um, even even fast. And we know we know fast is, is about Yom Kippur. But um, somebody asked to the Lord about that. Why your disciples are not are, are not um, fasting? And he say, I'm here. They they don't need that yet. But there's gonna come a time that they gotta need a fast. And I think I think it's for us, Rabbi. I think we're not ready. All right, so we got an opinions right now that we're not ready. Let's see if our opinions match up with the Word of God. Picked a few scriptures for this particular topic. We're going to start in the book of Bamidbar, Numbers 14, verses 36 to 30. I'm going to read it, actually, in which I don't normally do. I usually paraphrase it on the show. The men whom Moshe had sent to reconnoiter the land and who, when they returned, made the entire community complain against him, by giving an unfavorable report about the land. These men who gave them an unfavorable report about the land died by plague in the presence of Jehovah. Of the men who were who went to reconnoiter the land, only Yehoshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Yefune, remained alive. When Moshe told these things to all the people of Israel, the people felt great remorse. Now, the people felt great remorse, but what did they do with that? that remorse. Now let's go on a little further. Verse 40 uh, to 43. They rose the next morning, came up to the top of the mountain and said, here we are, and we did sin. But now we'll go up to the, p to the place Jehovah promised. Moshe answered, why are you opposing what Jehovah said? You won't succeed. Don't go up there because Jehovah isn't with you. If you do, your enemies will defeat you. The Amalekim and the Kenaim are there ahead of you and you will be struck down by the sword. The reason will be that you have turned away from following Jehovah so that Jehovah won't be with you. Let's pause there. Now, Israel was told not to go up. God is not going to be with them. Don't go there because God is not with you. Your enemies are going to defeat you. Now, here's something to think about, and I'll come back to Rav Ed with this question. What happens if we go to war? with North Korea, and we get our butts kicked. You know, we get, you know, America gets their butts kicked like we got our butts kicked in Vietnam. Okay, we were much stronger, much better, much better military. But now we have many people that hate us. What happens, Ravid, to the the Muslim who now says America can't even defeat North Korea, the tiny North Korea where most of their people are starving to death. What what happens to us? Ravet? Basically, um, like uh, I said, uh, it's, we can see the examples in, in the Bible. What happened with us we see the the example that either they they have the chance to prepare forty years, and when they when they don't go with God, you see, I I was looking for some point in here there about President Trump. We see in in some of the news that he started the Bible study, and his and see and his uh, time for government. And I believe that this is a baby steps for for the nation. The nation starts to born again. But to go right now straight to the war and lose is gonna be a, a big disaster because uh, the people how is gonna be the people? The people is gonna be spiritually is gonna go far away from God because how you start to build a, a big army when you have the foundation establishing something this government start to have the foundations and 
in the word of God. But once when you go out without God's permission, because you can see his advisors, um, it's not really, they're not giving a good advice to him. Because they, they have no, the spiritual matter, they don't have, they're not ready. If your teacher is not ready, how you gonna learn? So you, you need to have the basics for for the army. And we see uh, when 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 Joshua he he was in charge, he trusted in God. Now the other point of view also is with God we can do everything. With God can do everything. He can do many things. Maybe he can prove that as long the President Trump is proclaiming God, the Lord can do many things. But going to your question, you said about the people. The people should be united, supporting, getting ready, fasting, praying. The leader, the spiritual leaders should call to the nation and explain them the truth. The, the, the leader should, should call the nation and says, we we gonna go to war, so we need to pray and we need to fast to see if the Lord, if we find find favor in God. But if that happen, not everyone is going to do it. It's a it's, this is not a, sh a short topic that uh, to talk. This is a really serious topic that has to be involved everything the nucleus of the family, the nucleus of the town. Now, if we allowed to build a, a, a mosque in one of the towns and the people not stand for for the righteous, for something that is righteous, you know, we don't want this mosque in, in our town. Starting from there, the body starts to get more weak. And at the end, we're gonna, they're gonna kick, kick us out from here, and we won't be able to succeed if, if the leaders are not ready for, for the war, to command, to guide an army. I think, you know, I, I believe that you're correct, but I think one of the other keys here, Ravad and Joshua and those listening, and thank you for listening to the Sledgehammer Show. See, this is where we're different than any other show. You know, I, I watch, you know, I sometimes listen to, you know, Alex Jones. Alex Jones, Alex! You know, he doesn't know what, but from his elbow most of the time. You know, back in Rush Limbaugh and now even Andrew Clavin. Now, Clavin's funny. That guy is funny. But this is where the Sledgehammer Show is different. We're taking the news and everything we believe centers around God. Now, we take the history of the, the Word of God. Now, look at verse 14, in, uh, chapter 14, verse four, 44 and 45. But they were presumptuous and went up, on up toward the high parts of the hill country, even though the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah and Moshe stayed in the camp. So the Amalekim and the Canaan living in the hill country descended, struck them down, and beat them back all the way to Horma. See, when you don't fight with the word of God inside you, with you, and everything else, then you will get your butts kicked. Now, what is so scary now, because America has been sinking spiritually horribly, you know, when all we talk about is homosexuality, um, uh, one of the news articles, guys, listen to this. There is a professional uh, cuddler. There's businesses that have popped up in California to give people cuddles. Professional, how to professionally cuddle people because ever since Donald Trump took office, people just need cuddles. I'm like, imagine if we do not win this war. If Kim Jong-un destroys us, you know, sinks our, our, our aircraft carriers, shoots our planes down.
because God is not with us because we were presumptuous. Presumptuous that we, you know, we're, we're the mighty uh, America. We can take on it, you know, this little country. And there, I mean, what is God doing? See, we're at the edge of the brink of disaster. We really are. Because spiritually, we are not ready for a war. Technology, yes, our technology is better. We have more, more aircraft, more airplanes, but America was nothing when we fought the Revolutionary War. We fought the biggest military, the best military on the planet, and we won. Because we fought, because George Washington was a man who feared God. Don't listen to the other idiots. Read Washington's writings, his letters. Go to the, the website, wallbuilders.com. We don't, th these guys have the originals or they have copies of all of his writings. He was a God-fearing man. Now, in our White House, we have a, a sort of God-fearing man, but he's a baby believer like Rabbed just said. But are we being presumptuous, Joshua, Yehoshua? Are we being presumptuous? Are we going to go into this battle without the Ark of the Covenant, without the Word of God, and get our butts kicked all the way back to Horma? Joshua. Yes, they're going to push us so bad. And it's because, Rob, uh, not only the Ark, but Moshe. You know, Moshe, you represent, uh, Moshe represents the law. Well, Moshe represents the, the misvot of Elohim. So, the, the, I remember the verse that the Lord, um, Yeshua says that, talking about, in, uh, talking about hell, he says, um, um, Abraham, especially, he quote Abraham, talking about um, the rich guy, even if they, somebody dead come, um, Right there, you have Moshe, and you got the prophets. And um, this, this, this is crazy, Rabbi, because I also listening today. Oh, I wrote, I wrote, um, I, I was um, reading um, some news from the the missions. The guys in Africa, they call in to pray because tomorrow um, is something sad. Um, in Afghanistan, there's going to be 22. Christians, um, they already, they already took them, and they already says that they're gonna kill those twenty-two Christians tomorrow. And um, also, also the Pope is calling everybody to, you know, to meditate, and and it comes to my mind, Proverbs, Proverbs um, twenty-eight um, nine. People gotta start praying, even. But they, the, 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 their, their prayer is going to be abomination because they're not even keeping the, the simple things. They already forgot the law. And that's what happened with this, with this nation. Once you forget Moshe, once you forget the ark, and you go because you think you're strong, you're going to, you're going to get pushed. You're going to lose so bad. And it's sad to say because we're here and we're trying to... to to keep this, you know, not because us, but because the law, and because Yeshua, Yeshua is the is the the fire law, but they already forgot the law, they already forgot the the tablets, and they already forgot who's the Kohen Hagadol. So, Rab, I, I I wish you have a better <laughs> a better opinion about this, you know. I wish you have the the, the contrary in the comments right now. Is that no? This country's got to win, Rab, but without Yeshua, without the law, I think we have to, as Rav Ed says, just believe in, in, in what Yeshua says and go and run to the mountain because he don't, he don't, want, um, he don't want martyrs. Let's go run to the mountains. He already knew we're going to lose this, so... But he gotta protect us. That's the that's the that's the hope that we have to to the that remnant. That remnant if we keep the law, if we keep Yeshua, I think that's the that's the remnant that's gonna win. But spiritually this country rap, that's it. <laughs>
Well, well you know, yeah, this is a, a, a bleak topic, but what our job is is to prepare the people because it, we always go back to Second Chronicles 7. If my people are called by my name, would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. See, this Robert Jeffers doesn't know how to turn from wicked ways. He's saying that God says, take him out. Where in the scriptures do we say, go kill somebody, unless God says, I'm giving this people unto you? Okay? But here, you know, in the, the number scripture, let me go back to that. I hope I got the right one. Uh, well, one past it. One past it. We were presumptuous. We're going to fight without the word. We're going to fight without the holy objects. And now we're going, you know, why? Why is this little man that, you know, it's sort of like, you know, this guy, Kim Jong-un is nothing compared to the mighty Americans. People don't even have food to eat. And you're worrying about the guy? Send it. You know, if, you're, if you were really, you know, being evil, just send in a SEAL team and go take them out. Send some Black Hawk guys in, throw some Blackwater people in, and go kill the guy. Or, you know, just hit him with a nuclear... You know, you got a satellite. You know where he's going to the bathroom. Just take him out. Why are we doing this? Why is God drawing us into a fight? I believe it has to do with this next scripture. Okay, we're talking about are we spiritually ready to go to war? We're going to go to Devarim 28. There's two sides of this. I'm going to read both sides. And I'm going to bring Ravad back on because I think it's, you know, there's a there's a, a sadness in the spirit. A sadness in the spirit. Deuteronomy 28, verse 6 and 7. Blessing on you when you go out and a blessing on you when you come in. Jehovah will cause your enemies attacking you to be defeated before you. They will advance on you one way and flee on you seven ways. Good stuff. When you're walking with God, good stuff. Now let's go to the flip side of that. Let's go down to verse 25. Jehovah your Elohim will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You will advance on them one way and flee before them seven ways. You will become an object of horror to every kingdom on earth. So let's just say we go to war. Let's just say we go to war with, with this little minuscule country. Comparatively speaking, there are nothing. Not as many people, military-wise, you know, they they don't they don't need have, you know, we got enough airplanes to just crush them, carpet bomb the place and get rid of this this little boy who's a basketball fan, you know, and you know he's friends with Dennis Rodman, okay. God says if we're following him, then you'll go one way and they're gonna flee seven ways. Conversely, you know. You got Warren Jeffress saying, go kill the man. Where in Scripture, in Torah, does it say, go kill them? Okay? Unless the Lord is saying, you're going to take the promised land. And what does the Lord say in that? I'm going to go before you, and I'm going to hand them over to you. So here, what do you think, Rabbad? You know, we got the two sides of Devarim 28, 6 and 7, where we're walking with the Lord. But are, are we being... Are we spiritually re ready when we got a bunch of snowflakes that just need cuddles and you, you you really can't talk with people? You got the homosexuality, you got a Lutheran pastor, you know, letting his four year old kid transition into a girl. I'm like, when I was four years old, I wanted to be a fire truck. I didn't want to be the fireman, I wanted to be the truck. Did my mother start putting metal on me? You know, little kids don't know what the hell they want, they're little. You know? Yeshua was, you know, carrying his little blanket around, you know, I got my sword, and, you know, it's a kid, he's, you know, you're supposed to be the adult. You know, you got all this, everything's about sexuality, everything's about sexuality, not about education, and there's no discussing things, you know, with people, if you're on the right, like we're, we're on the right, and somebody, you know, is, you know, even... The title I was talking about my son, you know, well, you know, they're conservative. What does conservative mean? You know, conserv what real conservative is, is I believe in biblical values. So here, are we being presumptuous? Is, is President Trump 
being presumptuous, like the scripture says? Is he going to go to war without the word of God because he's got Warren Jeffress, the non-beard wearing, the non seatsy wearing, the non-Sabbath keeping? Is, is, is Joshua Lara right, our young Padawan, Rabbi? Proverbs 28, 9 says, you know, if a person doesn't follow Torah, there are prayers in abomination. Does President Trump need a Messianic Jew like somebody in the White House? Really advising? What do you think there, Rabbi? Well, definitely he needs uh, some Messianic Jew to advise him because uh, we, know, we know that through the scriptures, actually I would say a real Messianic Jew because we see around uh, there is some Messianic uh, church that they don't even keep the Sabbath, so how are they going to advise the right way to the president? But we also see in, in Amos uh, chapter 3, he says, uh, Jehovah does nothing without revealing his plans to his servants. So we can see that also says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And we can see the the events that is, is, is going on, you know. I believe that this is... Uh, this North Korea is another Hitler. Try to push to the to the war, to the war war. We can see before Hitler uh, explode all that, have the attacks, terrorist attacks. We've been having that. We 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 see all around the news uh, about ISIS. ISIS is taking over everywhere. Uh, f starting from there, this country says many people in here says. Oh, we don't want them. You know they, what they doing here? They should go back, but just words. They don't do anything. They don't stand stand up for for the truth. Uh, and I do believe that this is, if the President Trump, as I was saying, that if he proclaimed the law before to go to work, I'm sure, and I believe in God's promise, we're gonna succeed. But if we act according with, I have the power. If we take God's glory, we're not going to succeed. You know, we have to put God first. We have to have the shofars in front of the army and go to work with, with knowledge. As Sun Tzu says, we have to know the enemy. To know the enemy, we will win the war. And this but is the other part about what Sun Tzu said is don't be overconfident. Don't be overconfident because when an when a army is on dead ground, they fight with fero ferociousness. Now you were bringing something up about the you know let's so let's bring up our, our picture again of Warren Jeffers so you can see what this man looks like. You know he's not a he's not a true fa fearer of God or he would have a beard. You know, he doesn't have a beard on, he doesn't wear seat seat, he doesn't keep the Sabbath, he doesn't keep any of the seven holy days. So, now, if we go here to this one, let me see if I got the right one. Yes. See, Israel wanted the Ark of the Covenant in 1 Samuel 4, verses 1 through 11. And they, they brought the Ark of the Covenant, but they still lost the battle. Because the people spiritually had the equipment but they didn't have the heart and then the Lord allowed the Philistines to take the Ark of the Covenant and then we have the whole tumor thing and the rats and that whole thing but is Warren Jeffress this 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 guy here is he like those people in first Samuel that were going to battle we want the Ark he's got a Bible in his hand he's got 13,000 people you know, in this congregation, and we got a hundred, <laughs> and you know, maybe in the sanctuary, and nine hundred and some on online. Okay, but let me ask you a question, there, Joshua. Are we heading for something like this in the First Samuel, Joshua? What do you think? In the army, we know that just recently they tried to bring back the, the Bibles. 
the this fight first is is internal. We have to we have to understand. We have to learn our game first. By the time that the that the army and, and all the division separate from from the Lord, that they start doing crazy things, also taking the Bibles out. Um, that's when we start to lose. We thought we know. We thought we had the best army in the whole planet, and then we lost the ark right there. Right now, we're trying to bring it back. We still have to, we still have to take the time to, and it doesn't take much. Is is they have to just make a decision, and and I think, I think everybody in the in the division, in the navy, in the marine, in the, those those in the and the also the, the 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 guards and everybody should take the time. To start bring back the, the, the art. It's read read the Bible. It's supposed to start with the basic things. Even even if even if they don't they don't think it's right, even if they don't believe, because there's a lot of people not believing in the in the Lord, even if that they should put that as a law. Like if you in this division, if you hear you gotta do this. It's like it's like every every exercise. The people that doesn't like they don't like to do those exercises. They they like to see it. But once you inside, once you start suffering, you in your mind you think what I'm doing here. So even if you if even if they don't believe in the in the ark of the covenant, even if they don't believe in the word of God, start doing it. I think after that is when we go to bring as David did, because David he was he also didn't know what what to do with it. Also, they put it in a in a for for bring back the ark. I also remember once they bring it back, the leave those of those leave they die because they try to they try to bring this this ark as a show, and they die. But um, if we bring back this to our nation, even if they not believe, they're supposed to put it by force. Why? Because they know they already know it's the truth. Not only the president, but um, to, to, because he tried, as you say, he's a he's a baby believer. But um, also the the those generals, they have to do something, and they have to do it now. If not. <laughs> Then it's gonna be too late. I gotta bring. I gotta bring the tape back. I, I, I already said we're gonna lose it no matter what because nobody's doing nothing, right? But I gotta restrict in that. I think if they bring, if they bring a real rabbi and talk to the president, not what he wants to listen, but what it is. And if he listen, and he's the shuba, I think the thing is going you know the game can change, but but I think we have to start and start now. If not, I think we have to run to the mall one more time. <laughs> right. Well, I, I I think what what it really requires is passion. One of the things that most religious leaders are missing. And even a fair amount of the people that come to the congregation, especially those that, that left, they have no passion for God's word. Because if you had passion for God's word, Beth Goyim is your place. When we, you know, <laughs> I give kudos to Rabbi Ed and he starts to sweat by the end of the message. Um, you know, translating me for three, once again, we went over three hours. Okay, yeah, we're doing two languages, but... It, it's a lot of, you don't see other congregations doing this, staying all day. Even the Seventh-day Adventists, they don't really stay all day, as you've heard from some people. When you have a passion for God's Word, you want to stay in the house of the Lord, you want to be among fellow believers that 
not believers, because Satan believes in, in Yeshua. He doesn't follow him. Okay, we follow. We claim to be 100% legalistic as much as we can possibly do. Because the Lord said in Shemot 34, 24, Exodus 34, 24, For I am going to expel the nations ahead of you and expand your territory, and no one will, let, will even covet your land when you go up to appear before Yehovah your Elohim three times a year. I'm going to expel. See, when you're, when I have passion for the Lord's word. I love God, and he's done so many things. You know, a lot of, you know, Paula White, you know, you know, she, you know she's divorced. Okay, people can make mistakes, but you can't be in your position. This Warren Jeffers guy, if you really love God, you would switch over to the Sabbath because it's there 120 times in King James, 116 times in the CJB that we read. See, when you, when you got, want to go to war, I'd rather have 300 of Gideon's army than a million has, uh, you know, people, Philistines. Because David, little guy, little boy David, had zealousness. I'm coming out with you in the name of the Lord our God. You said something bad about my God. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to feed you to the birds. He had passion, a love. I don't see that even in a lot of people that come here. Mm. Mm. So are we spiritually ready for the war? No. I think what's going to happen is we're going to get our butts kicked and at a minimum not really win. And that's going to embolden our enemies because we're, we're more focused on our weenies, our, our vaginas, our boobs, our, what clothes we're wearing, what the Kardashians are doing. Who gives a damn about the Kardashians? She, you know, she has a, a, a line... Oh, it's pot, you know, smoking pot. Uh, one in eight people now are alcoholics. You know, it's amazing. And, and you know, here a president, you know, he, he, I believe President Trump loves this country. I really do. Uh, and I believe he's, sur he's trying to surround himself with good people. But pre Mr. President, you know, you got to, even Mr. Vice President, I love you. I think you're... You're a man who is a Christian who kn knows a bit about the Lord. But you got to go deeper. If, if you guys were to say, you know what, we're doing the Sabbath. Even if Israel doesn't really do the Sabbath. I'm, I'm reading my Bible, Mr. V Mr. Vice President, Mr. President, Vice President Pence. If you were to say the Sabbath is the right day, God would destroy North Korea without us firing a shot. Because... Faith, people are looking for leaders. They've always looked for leaders. You know, you know, Israel said to God, right? Right, guys? We want a king just like everybody else. And the Lord says, am I good enough for you? Am I good enough for you? Like, what? he was right there. What was wrong with you? Because Egypt was inside of us, and Egypt is still inside of us. We want what the pagans want. We don't want to spend the whole Sabbath. We don't want to fast on, on Yom Kippur. We don't want to put the blood on the door for Pesach. We just want to make it easy. Well, no, 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 no. The Lord said, I'm going to expel the nations ahead of you. Expand your territory. The Lord will find our battles. Yeah, does he have to send us in to do the cleanup? Yeah. But ten of you will chase a hundred. Five of you will chase a hundred. A hundred of you will taste 10,000. That means we're little. Now, conversely, if we're not following the Lord, conversely, if we're not following the Lord, conversely, if we're not following the Lord, we're, we're going we're gonna to presumptuously go, oh, we're going to take out Kim Jong Un. You know, he's just this little North Korean country. It's like Guatemala or something like that, El Salvador. You know, we can take them with, you know, just a fart in a breeze. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we can just take, you know, care of Guatemala, you know. The Dominican Republic, you know, look at that. They got toothpicks to fight with, you know. But a little without God, this is what Sun Tzu didn't understand. Without God, 
any little army. Gideon, the Lord says, that's too many. Okay? And Gideon put some fleeces before the Lord. What do you got, Rabbi? What do you, what do you think? If, if the Lord is going to go before us, you know, are we spiritually ready for any type of war? Simple example. Uh, I have people today that they they worry, they they afraid. They said, "So, what do you think about this? What are we ha what are we going to do with all this news? Uh, I think we're going to war." He, and they asked me, "So, what do we have to do?" I told them, "We got to go back to God." And they just they they changed their face. One of them get angry, look me with bad eyes, <laughs> and the other one have a evil laugh, like, <laughs> yeah, right, turn to God, it was going to happen. So you can see the actions in the people. And I, uh, I told them, and the gospel says, in Matthew 10, 34, says, do not think that I, I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. You know, it's all but are we ready spiritual? No. We can we can prove by the young David that you said. David says in one forty four one, Psalm one forty four one, um, blessed be the Lord my rock who is who trained my hands for war and my fingers for battle. You know. If we have people like David, of course we're gonna win win the war. And I also tell him, if something is going to happen, we got to be in, in the holidays appointed by God. You know, we have the scripture, the scripture uh, at the last trumpet, which is weird, you know. Maybe I told him, the Lord can change anything. He's, he's the last trumpet, maybe, but could be right now or at the end of his... Uh, job, you know, by doing, uh, being a president, we coming close to the 10 days of repentance. We coming close to Yom Teruah, Yom Kippur. If the people don't repent, I do believe that the Lord find his 10 righteous. And my prayer is that the Lord find his 10 righteous also. That by doing that, he can push back a little bit to see our, our generation try to change something. I really believe that. Uh, I trust in the Lord, but we're few. We just few the one who really feel the Lord. But if the Lord has find his ten, ten righteous, his promise is still there. He won't destroy. He, he will protect. Just we have to keep trusting in the Lord and keep doing our job. Make sure by doing that, you never know. Maybe coming to maybe the President Trump can see this problem, and we are pray that he he see this problem pro, uh, this program and says you know let's go back to to Sabbath and let's really learn about God. Young Padawan, two minutes of your closing statements for your guest hosting, your guest uh, guesting on the Sledgehammer show here. The resume, the conclusion of everything is this: <laughs> go back to Torah. <laughs> I think that's the that's the thing, that's the point of that's the point of this show. As a point of the hammer, I think this hammer have to or already did hit on the place that it's supposed to hit. I think this hammer, this hammer show, um, is doing what it's supposed to do. You know, now what the people wants to hear. You know, you probably the the listening listening. You probably is not. You probably don't like this, but um. It's time to come back. It's time to repent. It's time to accept, you know, the reality, you know. And even if you think this is a reality show, this is the 
real reality show. Yeah. The the real life is in Torah. And if you don't come back, um, even if you don't believe, that's the truth. It's gonna happen. You know, you're already listening to war and rumors of war. You're already listening, uh, um, and you already saw all, all these problems. People in the street, as I said, people um, homeless. You know, New York full of homeless. Why? Because we're already, you know, losing the spiritual bottle. But I think we can't come back and fix it. The only way is not if we trust in us, if we trust in Yeshua and his Torah. And I hope the president listens to this, Mr. President. You are nice, and I don't want to get fired, <laughs> but I think you can change this if you want. If you want to come back to Torah, it's up to you. You're already, you're already there, and you probably do whatever you want, but um, you have to come back. I think there's a guy who calls Rabbi Andrew. He's willing to help, I think. You know, some advice. Um, and any question that you have by expressing about the Torah is right there. You already have the Torah. Don't think it's something weird. It's the Bible. Um, we just have to come back. And thanks for inviting me here, Rabbi. Rabbi. Hugs for everybody, and and thank you. Shalom. As Yeshua said, you can see the signs in the clouds, but you can't see the sign of the times. The biggest key is this, that once you realize there's a problem, you have a diagnosis. You have cancer, you have this, or you have that. It's an opportunity to change the path that you're on. You can go through the chemo treatment or whatever. You know, somebody says, you know, if you don't lose weight, you're, you're going to become a diabetic. That's also another key. Diabetes. We've grown fat. God said, when I'm angry with you, I'll give you the, the disease of Egypt. And when did we find out about diabetes? The Egyptians discovered diabetes. It was called stinky, stinky pee. We have a diagnosis, everybody. Mr. President and those listening, we have a diagnosis. We should not go to war unless we're ready spiritually. If God is for us, who can be against us? And ask yourself this question, Mr. President, and of those listening to this. Why should God be for you? Why should he be? You don't keep his Sabbath. You don't keep his holy days. You don't keep kosher. You don't, you don't circumcise. You don't do anything Messiah Yeshua ever did. Even to you, Mr. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, I love you. Ahava, I think you're a wonderful man. I think you've done an, a good job. I do believe that you love Eretz Yisrael. But it's time to let the beard grow. It's time to wear the seat seat on the outside. It's time to be not just Jewish, but a Hebrew, and not worry about what the millennials think. They're trying to take you down, Mr. Prime Minister. I don't think you did those things they're saying, that just like President Trump. I don't believe they did that. But we're heading for some bad times if we don't our leadership doesn't understand that we're sick and we need some spiritual healing. I don't think the world is ready to go to war because Messiah said once it starts this time, it's not going to stop. Israel wasn't a nation in World War II. That was the catalyst. Capturing Jerusalem in 67, that was the next step. But Christians out there you pathetic people. Messiah doesn't come back until seven seals, seven shofars, and seven bowls. 
And you don't want to have to try to live through that, especially if you're a millennial. You've been listening to The Remnants Call, The Sledgehammer Show. This has been Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, joined with Messianic Rabbi Eduardo Mangeris and our young Padawan, Joshua Lara. I bid you an amen, an amen, an amen. amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the Donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend a day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures, searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members, 
bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.